Spring football practice is underway here at Monmouth University. We look forward to the 2013 season. I'm happy to steal a few minutes of head coach Kevin Callahan's time as his team is back on the field. And coach, I know as a coach, you love to be back on the field. You're in pads now for the first time in the spring. It has to be a good feeling. Well, spring is always an exciting time. You know, you go through the winter. You're working uh, hard in the weight room. You're in your winter conditioning program. And the players and coaches alike are, are excited when it comes time to get back out on the field and really uh, put to use all those gains that you've made in the strength and conditioning areas. And as you said, today is our fifth practice. It's our first day in full pads. And, you know, there was a high level of excitement. I liked a lot of things we saw. I saw out there. But as a lot of the first days of contact always are, there's some sloppy things that need to be cleaned up. Right, and Coach, obviously that's going to be one of the things that you look forward to do you know, every week in the spring. And I've spoken to you for the spring before, and one thing that always sticks out that you tell me is the progress you want to see your team make week to week leading up to that spring game on April 27th. Well, it, it, during spring practice, really, one practice has to build upon the, the, the previous one. And you're, you're really spending a lot of time on fundamentals and trying to develop the players in, in each and every position. Position, while at the same time trying to determine you know who may be the guy stepping up or the next guy in line is going to replace uh, one of our graduating seniors so that the, the the plan in spring practice is really twofold one player development across the board but number two to find out who the guys are going to be to be the next man up the guy stepping in to replace some of the graduating ones and coach is that the focus in the spring it may be not as much uh, implementation of things for the fall as much as it is really just getting them ready for that summer off season? Well, it, it's it's player development. It's it's fundamentals. It's blocking. It's tackling, throwing, catching. Um, it's also a, an opportunity for our offense and defensive staffs to look at some variations and schemes. And there are some new things that we're taking a look at this spring, as we do every spring. So it's the combination of those things. You have 15 days or, or 14 practices and then a spring game uh, in which to work on that. So you've got to be smart about what, what you're doing. And going every other day, as we are right now on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, we're able to have pretty good intensity in the practices. They have a day off in between and then come back on the following day. Well, I'm sure the, the fans would hear all that, hear the, the limited number of times and say, that's, that's a lot that you guys are doing in kind of a short amount of time. Well, it is, and but you know, you do have those two hours each day to go, each practice day to go out there and work on certain things. And you know, I, I like where we're at. Through five practices, we've been able to install uh, just about our entire offense and defense. Uh, in addition to some new things that we're looking at, uh, the players have made steady progress from the practices in helmets to the helmets and shoulder pads, and then today for the first time in full pads. And coach, before we talk about both sides of the ball, I have to specifically mention, you know, kind of the the glamour position, what everyone's going to look at. And that's the quarterback spot. You know, you, you're going to graduate a player in Kyle Frazier, who was a, a, a stalwart back there for a long, long time. He has a couple local pro tryouts, which is obviously great news for the program. And, and not to single one position out, but losing Kyle now enter kind of the next phase of Monmouth football. Well, as you said, you know, Kyle's very fortunate to have a, a workout opportunities with the New York Jets and also the New York Giants coming up here within the next week. Uh, but losing Kyle uh, and also losing uh, the backup from last season, Craig Peterson, right. has put us in a situation where we have four quarterbacks on the roster, none of whom have played in a game before. So they don't have the advantage of that game experience. Uh, and they're, they're, they range from junior, sophomore, all the way down to freshman. So it's going to be a critical spring for that position. Position. We're looking for one of the guys in that group to emerge and become the leader, uh, a guy who can separate himself from the other three, a guy who can demonstrate that not only does he have a command of our offense, but he has the leadership capability to be our on-the-field general, so to speak, for our offense. Uh, with the lack of experience that the group overall has, the spring is crucial in every area. And the offense as a whole now, not just on the quarterback side, but you know, it's only been, as you said, a handful of practices. What have you either seen from them or looking to see from them this week, especially specifically on the offensive side of the ball? Well, I, I think that you know the guys understand that number one, we're, we're trying to find a new quarterback. We're trying to find who that second and third tight end is going to be. We need to replace a couple of guys in the offensive line. So the thing that I've been most impressed about is the way that the guys come and compete and how hard they work every day. You know, when you're going against yourself, 
offense against defense, there's going to be good things and bad things on both sides of the ball. But the main thing you want to get is the tempo that you're practicing at, how hard you're working, and how much you're competing. And so far, I've been very satisfied with that with our offense. And then to, to kind of flip it on the other side of the ball, you know, you, you cut your teeth as a defensive coach. So specifically on that side of the ball, what are you keeping an eye on? Well, we, we need to uh, replace uh, one of the linebackers in the interior of our defensive line is probably the focus right now. Uh, having graduated both uh, uh, Mike Upham and Chris Luma, uh, we have some guys with some game experience, but not a tremendous amount of experience. So that's one of the areas where we're concentrating on, and, and we also need to, to get some more experience in the safety position. And coach, just kind of as a kind of a wrap up overall question, you know, this week uh, almost done. Now you have the the other practice on Saturday. You know, what maybe do you want to get done by Saturday again as we kind of tick towards that blue white game on the 27th? Well, well today uh, being the first day in full pads, I mean, I, I thought we had great energy and we had great intensity with the practice. But as often happens in your first time of going full gear live contact situations, you know, there's some sloppiness on both sides of the ball that we need to clean up. And as I talked to the team after this morning's practice, that's something that we have to clean up and eliminate heading into Saturday. Saturday, I expect us to, to execute and function uh, much better than we did today. I also expect us to take another step forward, uh, be a little bit more aggressive, uh, be sure of what we're doing, compete a little bit harder. And I think if we continue to do that day after day throughout the spring, we will be where we need to be come April 27th. Well, Coach, we appreciate a few minutes today, and we will periodically check in with how things are going up leading up to that spring game. I appreciate it, Eddie. Thank you. That's the head coach of the Monmouth University football program, Kevin Callahan. We will be checking in with the Monmouth Hawks during their spring season. Again, it all leads up to the spring blue-white game on April 27th. This, uh, you know, five practices in, you got full pads, how's it going? Uh, it's a lot of fun, you know. I mean, been waiting all winter, working, working out, running, doing conditioning stuff. You know, it's about time to get back in pads and uh, start hitting people. As today was the first day in full pads. How is that different than having a couple days in uh, helmets and, and uppers? Well, helmets practices, you know, for the big guys like us, it's kind of boring. But uh, the uppers practices are basically the same thing as full pads for us. We're banging on every play. But the only difference is with the, you know, full pads are going live, tackling, running back to the ground, cutting, that kind of stuff. How um, how do you think that the defense did in the team drill? You, you held them to 0 for 5 in that oh, yeah. the special period, the win period, as oh, Coach yeah. Callahan calls defense it. Defense dominated today, and uh, it's got to be like that every day. You know, got to make it work to make the offense catch up. What were you guys doing that that was so successful? Is it just playing assignment football? To, to honest, yeah, to be honest, we were just playing assignment football and you know out working on them in that series. Other than team period, what's your favorite other period as a D lineman? Pass rush one on ones. Absolutely. Is there anybody specifically on the old line? You know, you're senior. You've had a lot of, uh, a lot of these one-on-one -on -one drills, a lot of, a lot of inside drill. Who, who specifically on the old line do you like to go up against? Uh, I wouldn't say like to go up against, but me and Maxwell go at it every day, pretty much. You know, and uh, this year now, Peter Island, me and him going at it a lot. You know, making each other better. It's good, it's good work. Who, uh, who holds the upper hand in that? I don't know. I'd say it's about 50-50. Very diplomatic of you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Finally, you know, you're very young on defense, specifically up front, the front four, and, and the linebackers are, are young. What, uh, as a senior, you know, you've been in the system for a couple of years now. Talk about your role trying to teach the younger guys. You know, just uh, get them in the right spots, you know, make sure they know what the call is. You know, so you see somebody not lined up in the right spot, make sure you get them there, make sure we're in the right defense, you know, get make ourselves successful. As we continue to look at this Monmouth football team in the spring season, have the deep defensive line coach, Juwan Jackson, with me now. And, and we're going to take a, a look not only at that defensive line, but also the Monmouth defense as a whole. And Coach Jackson, let's begin with taking a look back before we look forward. You do lose three contributors, key contributors, starters off of a defensive line. You lose Mike Upham, Chris Loomer, Brad Harris, guys who played a lot of games here in West Long Branch. So moving forward into the spring, as you take a look at some of the younger players and, and give maybe some new guys some reps, uh, what does losing three contributors like that mean to you specifically as the D-line coach? Well, it's really tough for us because when you lose three starters, it's 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 hard to make up for that, you know what I mean? I mean, like you said, they played a lot of games. You know, Mike Upham started since a sophomore. Luma started two years ago, played as a backup, and came back a bit, started again. And Brad Harris also started for two years. So it's tough to replace that type of experience. Yeah. Right. So now you're asking other people to step up for you. Now the good part is the way we play, luckily, we always try to play seven or eight guys in the game. 
You know, so a lot of those younger guys actually got reps, not as many as they wanted to, but they got more reps and they've been game ready. And so now we still have about six guys on the roster who've actually played for us and understand what it means to work hard and be out there and, you know, what it takes to go against bigger, stronger individuals. You know, so I think that's that's one thing that's great for us. And guys like, uh, even like uh, Samanowitz or Demetrius Smith or um, even Patrick O'Hara, who is now a senior himself, but uh, been playing since he was a sophomore, at least 10 plays a game. You know, that really makes up for us up front. You were on kind of both sides of it. You played, now you coached. So going through what you just mentioned, players who maybe were in the rotation but now could be relied on to start, how does that change a player's mindset? Well, basically, the one thing they want to do is, you know, they, nobody ever wants to sit on the bench. And I think that's the best part about playing the D-line here at Monmouth. You know, nobody's truly sitting on the bench. It's either you're playing or you're not. You know, if you're traveling, you don't get into the game. You know, so they feel as though as long as you make the bus, you're going to be a contributor. But now, obviously, at that point, you know, you're kind of like saying, okay, well, I got 10 plays, but I want to play. Like, I want 40 plays. I want 50 plays. I don't want 10 plays. And I think that's where your mindset changes. You understand, well, how come I'm not that guy? Well, I do I need condition more. I need to uh, uh, study the game more, those type of things. And I think at that point in time, when they understand what the older guys did that they didn't do at the time, that's when they, the light finally clicks for them, and it, it moves up from there. And how important then is it during the spring for those players to maybe make those necessary changes? I think it's a huge, huge difference. You know, we had a couple guys that played last year that didn't get any spring time, and they were so rusty going into August. And, you know, you're always going to be going from April to August anyway. But the fact that, you know, like one guy was said, like Andrew Drozinski, who last year had a soldier, soldier surgery, you know, came in August and didn't play as well as I would have liked to have. And now he's already gotten a lot better just from playing from the fall and actually contributing now in the spring. And now all of a sudden he's making big strides. You know, I think guys like that, for us, it's it's huge, you know. So at least getting those practices in in the spring and understanding that, oh, wow, four guys, excuse me, three guys left. Now all of a sudden I have a chance to really be in a rotation or I was in a rotation, I have a chance to start. You know, it really helps everybody else's game. Then you mentioned some of the improvements that he made to to now be one of those guys that are on the field. You know what what are you looking for from the defensive line as a whole? You know obviously it's early in a spring practice. Pe just got pads on, uh, able to to get that going. What are you keeping it on specifically with the D line? You know as this kind of first couple of practices wind down and before you really get into the meat of the spring. Well, there's two things I have to concentrate on this off season. One is definitely getting better in the middle. As you know, we lost two fifth year seniors in the middle, and they were huge contributors for us and our running game you know opposing running game was probably the best it's ever been in a long time and you know, losing those type of guys it's tough to replace so you have to find a way to get those guys going and obviously making up for those with some freshmen coming in or uh, hopefully a young guy stepping up you know so getting bigger stronger in, in the middle of the, of the defense is really the key and the second is pass rush um, we weren't very good at it last year um, we had some times we were okay at it, but as a whole, as a defense toward the end of the year, we just didn't do it as well as, as we had in the beginning of the year or even the season before. So we had to find a way to create that a little bit better, and I think we have. Um, you know, we have some young guys that are that are pretty good at it. Um, Zach Rosera, he's one who, uh, you know, he came down to me from linebacker, and, you know, he's doing some pr a pretty good job in the quarterback right now, as well as uh, Darnell Leslie now as a freshman. He's actually stepped his game up, and, uh, you know, he has some pretty good moves for a young guy, so we'll see how he, how he goes. But I think we're already better up front than we were, at least in the pass rush wise. I just don't know about stopping the run. Obviously, we got some details we need to step up. Well, Coach, we appreciate a few minutes today. We'll keep an eye on those players improving as the spring unfolds, and we thank you for your time. Thank you very much. That's Mama defensive line coach Jawan Jackson. We'll keep an eye on that defensive line and the defense as a whole as the spring moves forward again, all focused in on that important date, Saturday, April 27th, the Blue-White Spring Game.